Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert business show. Today I've got something special in this solo episode where I'm going to talk about the top 9 learnings I had from being uh, surrounded by millionaires and multimillionaires in a private island for uh, an invitation-only retreat that I have attended. So I'll uh, talk to you a bit more about that in a moment, but if you are uh, watching the replay, make sure you put hashtag replay here in the show as this is a live show um, or if you are watching live let me know in the comments or if you're listening the recording of the podcast then welcome 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 so let's get started straight away let's get started immediately um, and guys if you're watching just uh, uh, let me know right now so then I can um, I can uh, um, say hi and give you a shout out here on the show all right let's get started first of all uh, these are this is my first learning I'm going to go through all nine uh, right now this is my first learning which is uh, invest in your network and yourself. What do I mean about that? Now, if you want to, a lot of people, they complain because uh, they say, oh, well, I'm not surrounded by the right people. I don't have the right network. Um, all the people that I'm around in business, they don't have any money to invest. Well, first of all, are you yourself? investing in your network because uh, if you keep going to free events uh, then uh, that's the crowd you are going to hang out with which is the free event crowd but if you then want to upgrade your network then you need to look at where are those other communities uh, where the people that you want to be connected with are part of and that's for example how I decided to connect with a specific community because I saw the value in connecting with people that uh, I would never normally meet uh, or I would not even know that um, the kind of businesses they have or the work that they do. So first of all, if you want to expand your network and then be successful in your network, you got to invest in your network. Uh, the more you invest in your network, the more opportunity opportunities you will be able to create for yourself and the people around you. Hey, Linda. Uh, hi, Michelle. Thank you very much for, for joining. So that's number one. Number two is a learn from other industries. It was something fascinating that happened throughout the retreat because we had multiple different sessions that we could attend as well as moments to socialize and have fun. In the, all the sessions that uh, were scheduled, they were from uh, very different industries to the one that I belong to, which is uh, the personal development, uh, business growth type of industry. But there were a lot of sessions around e-commerce, uh, growing and uh, gr growing businesses to sell, which is not something which is talked about a lot in our industry. Or, for example, how to do you scale a business and exit the business? Or how do you invest in, uh, in smaller companies? And uh, that was brilliant because a lot of time we would, uh, uh, as we normally do, we would uh, keep learning things that are related to our industry. But then it happens, and I don't know if that ever happened to you, but certainly happened to me, that I became kind of narrow-minded. These are This is the way the things should be done because uh, the majority of people do them in this way. So there is a real value to study other industries and understand how they operate, how they work, what's trending right now in those industries, because you might be able to find one or two things that you can apply to your own industry, but actually belongs to another industry. That's something that absolutely uh, you will love, um, something that I've learned throughout, throughout the process as well. So that's number two, learn from other industries. Then we're going number three. And number three is uh, get your ego out of the way or leave the ego out of the door. Uh, why am I saying this? Uh, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about ex this experience that I had was the fact that uh, everyone is the same uh, when, <laughs> when we are all in uh, flip-flops uh, and uh, <laughs> a bathing suit <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> or swimming trunks, right? There is no who has the most expensive watch or who has the most expensive car uh, or uh, who is the dressed best, uh, 
And so you're actually surrounded by people that are millionaires, multi-millionaires, but everyone is the same in that environment. And that creates a great ground for conversations in particular if you're interested in people. But if you're going there with your with your big ego and say, okay, I'm there to prove myself or I'm there to prove something to others or at the same time it can be I'm there because I want to be known and be noticed, then in that environment, then you become the outsider. You become the person that people don't want to talk to because there everyone is there because they want to have a good time. And this is a great lesson that you can take, uh, and definitely I'm going to take, uh, in uh, all the other business networking events uh, that I'm going to, other networking environments, which is uh, seeing people as people and uh, not being concerned about uh, uh, what kind of uh, level of businesses they are at or uh, what uh, can they offer, what can I get out of the of that relationship. Like a lot of people go into networking with this uh, kind of attitude and this kind of mindset. But if you have it, then uh, you're going to stop a lot of great conversations from happening. And of course, uh, it's about, which it then leads to another lesson I'm going to be t- sharing it later, uh, which is being strategic in networking. I'm going to tap it Um, to talk about that later so that's lesson number three get your ego out of the way connect with people as people everyone has something to offer and don't go into networking environments uh, wanting to get the client that's not what networking is for networking is to create connection the clients will come from this connection and maybe one or two will become clients who knows but if you're there always selling selling yourself selling what you do then people are going to be bored and they're not going to talk to you anymore. So that's uh, another big, big lesson here that I've learned. And, and guys, if you have any question or if there is something you'd like to share or something that really stood out for you, please share it in the comment uh, in the comments uh, right now. Okay, so let's go into uh, lesson number four. And the lesson number four, which is a uh, link to what we said before, is uh, connect not sell. So you are there to connect. already talked about that earlier. You're there to connect. You're help, there to create the relationships. The sale will come. Stay there. Create relationship. That's your primary focus. Then we're going to lesson number five, which is uh, know how to have fun and be interesting. Now, guess what? People don't want to be around boring people. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I'm not saying, I'm not saying before, like the introverts uh, that are watching this live or they're listening right now, they're saying, well, but I'm not extroverts like you, Simone. No, I'm not saying that. Introverts and extroverts, you can decide to, you can, you are who you are. That's fine. What I'm saying is, even as an introvert, are you making yourself interesting? Do you have something interesting to say in a conversation? And also, do you know how to have fun? Because guess what? If you know how to have fun, whatever fun means to you, because you will find people that will have the same idea of fun and will connect with you in that way. But if you know how to have fun and if you know how to be interesting, guess what? You become like a magnet for people and people will want to be around you, whether you are the introvert, whether you are the extrovert, but make yourself interesting, have great talking points, have an idea, have an opinion about uh, what you, you want, what is your business and what you talk about and, and your beliefs around society. Make sure you keep this brain active and engaged because uh, guess what? When you play to a certain level, you will meet some of the smartest people in the world and uh, the small talk goes that far. <laughs> is uh, then when you go into deeper talks, then they, they, you can really understand who they are and they can really understand who you are as a person, as an individual. So that's lesson number five. Know how to have fun and be interesting. Then we're going to lesson number six. And lesson number six is uh, have something to offer. Have something to offer. I'm not saying have something to sell. That's different. I'm saying have something to offer offer what is that you can provide to the people that are there in an environment that 
can get people also to gravitate towards you. So for example, uh, this is what I did and it's something that helps me network really effectively with influencers and great people, which is uh, having a podcast. Say, hey, who wants to be interviewed on my podcast? And we had a private chat and a private app with all the participants of this retreat. And then I got about like 25 people that wanted to be interviewed on the show. Now, guess what? I'm going to now create a relationship with those 25 people and that will be the next touch point instead of just living it as it is. So what is that you can offer to people that to give them... And remember, everyone wants contact. Everyone wants exposure. Everyone uh, uh, wants more opportunities. Everyone uh, wants to know, learn something. So what is it you can offer that can make yourself more attractive to people and also start that conversation. Uh, because otherwise there is the risk, in particular to a larger environment, that you blend in the crowd. And so when I went there, I knew that uh, GTEx was actually one of the smallest businesses that were there. There were about 170 people and uh, the majority were millionaires, multimillionaires. Uh, uh, and uh, GTEx uh, was one of the smallest businesses there. However, but like we are around the, the, the alpha million mark uh, the, for the last financial year. And so uh, we, I knew that uh, I wasn't getting there to, I was going there to learn. I was going there to uh, create relationship. I was going there to build networks. I wasn't going there as the authority, like or a lot of people that will go and see me in London and I, and they know who I am. There I'm a no one. And so how do I get myself known and uh, build relationship in that community and get people also to come to me is by adding value, giving them something that they want. And that's why the podcast is a great way. So number uh, six, have something to offer. And then we have number seven. Now we're going to more tactical things that I've learned by having conversations with people and some recurring patterns that I've seen in uh, having conversation with some of the most successful people in the world. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the people that was there actually owned the bloody island <laughs> where we were there, like a billionaire running an island. I mean, if you own an island, I want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. <laughs> no matter what you do. Um, is, uh, is, so uh, one thing I've learned is know your numbers. This is uh, a consistent recurring point that came across you got to know your number if you want to grow your business you got to stay on top of your number you want to know what your cash flow is you want to know the money in you don't want to know when the money is coming out and you want to know it on a regular basis and so if you don't know your numbers in this way it will be very difficult for you to see where, how you can grow and be strategic in where you allocate the resources. And cash is being one of the most important resources in, in your business. So know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, go back. <laughs> go back to the drawing board. Go back to your spreadsheets. If, you don't, if that's not your strength, which is not mine, get someone to be with you and to help you. There are great people called accountants <laughs> that exactly what they do or um, have someone that can act as a CFO or um, uh, so someone that can help you out with the finances in your business. Then, so this is number seven, know your numbers. We are going to number eight, uh, network strategically. This is coming from a great conversation with a good friend of mine, Chris Reynolds. Now, Chris is the person who invited me on the island and... Uh, um, I was really surprised because Chris is like super quiet. You don't see him. Uh, he's not like the star of the show. He's not the life of the party. Quite reserved, quite private. But every time I was mentioning uh, to people that, uh, wow, why are you here? Well, Chris invited me. Oh, Chris Reynolds? I know Chris. And literally about 80% of the people that I told to and I told to a lot of people, knew that bloody Chris Reynolds. I was like, man, this stuff is quite quiet, but that man knows how to network. So I, I asked him, I said, man, what happened? Like, <laughs> every person I told to knows you. <laughs> and he said, uh, uh, well, you know, um, I know how to network. And I said, okay, so what do you do? And he said, well, 
this is what I do. I, first of all, network with the people that know people. That's the number one. So I'm very strategic. Whenever I go into a community, I want to network, uh, first of all, with the founders, with the people that know the people that are part of that community. Because I can just spend time talking to everyone, um, but then uh, I will not have uh, really an understanding of who I should talk to. So that number one, that's what he does. We'll go in and build a relationship. And it takes time to build a relationship. It takes time to add value. It takes time to to build a strong relationship. But man, once you do it, then your job is done. And uh, you will reap the benefits from that relationship. Or whatever those benefits are. It can be business or personal relation benefits. So number one is be strategic. And that's what he does. And then he will actually spend time to connect with all the different people in that community. That's how people knew about him. And that's why he was like a bit of a celebrity there because everyone wanted to talk to him or <laughs> he was always surrounded by people. Even if he was he's not what he's, he's like or he's not a person, it will be the loudest one, definitely. And so then spend time building relationship with the right people in the community because you never know, you meet someone that then can be a domino effect and now suddenly you know all the rest. So network strategically. Thank you, Chris Reynolds, for this uh, tip. Uh, that just reading some of the comments, Michelle is saying business is personal. Uh, Penny Power and I totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I like the way that you listed the strategies from successful networks. This is the secret to success. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Michelle. I'm actually uh, uh, going to add your comment here on the video where everyone can see it. Yeah, guys, you can see it. Thank you, Michelle, for uh, commenting and you guys if you want me to put a comment here just uh, let me know and write uh, maybe some of your biggest learnings or something that you want to add to the conversation here right now so now we're going to number uh, eight which is network strategically we have the last one number nine and number nine is the bigger you play the bigger the challenges i was attending a session with uh, a lady called megan uh, which uh, built and sold the companies, a multi-million dollar company. And um, uh, she was mentioning that actually companies break uh, generally at some points. So one is the first million, then three million, then 10 million, then 30 millions. So that's where um, generally you find companies having their breaking point. So she reached the first 10 million and uh, she was um, uh, selling natural products to for for dyeing hairs, um, to, for coloring hairs. And it was all natural. They had great, great exposure for their products. They've been and now building the company to like 30 million plus, and now she sold the company. And so one of the things that she said is that when she, one of the challenges that she had to face, then when she reached the 10 million, she had always a lot of orders, she had always a lot of clients, so that was great, but all their manufacturing suppliers, both of them, they stopped delivering. And so literally for about nine months, that was almost like making a baby. <laughs> For about nine months, she had only to solve problems, finding new factories, find new manufacturing suppliers, creating backup plans. And uh, all the sales uh, then in that point stopped because they couldn't service all their clients anymore. And so, uh, you know, when you have thousands of clients that uh, you are letting down that you are that you cannot serve there are thousands of people that are jumping ship to someone else that can deliver that bloody products and in the meanwhile your expenses are high because now you have staff you have people you have infrastructures you have facilities and so actually for nine months she was like pulling credits uh, right, left right and center and she couldn't work on growing the business but she had just to put patches where she could while uh, they were building all the infrastructures for this not to happen again and finding the new suppliers. So it was really fascinating to listen to her because, uh, you know, sometimes when we are um, uh, running small businesses or maybe you're running a business by yourself and is the first one and maybe like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand pounds or dollars, they, they are a big deal. Um, they sometimes, like I remember, it can be the difference between like paying the rent one month and not paying the rent the next month. 
and, and, and remember those times. Then you're looking at and, and everyone wants to grow and everyone wants to grow. I want to the majority, not everyone, but uh, a lot of people want to have a multi six figure, multi seven figure business. Uh, and remember, the bigger the business, the bigger the headaches, because now your overheads will be bigger. The impact will be bigger. What you have to lose is much more. And so um, my recommendation is uh, if you're at the beginning, start focusing on creating those, this, the foundation for your business uh, to, because then when, when it will grow and you will have much bigger problems, then uh, it's going to be even tougher. And so the bigger the business, the bigger the problem. So think about what kind of business do you want to have? Do you want to have a business with a lot of staff or do you want to have a lean business that makes you good money and supports you and your family? Because um, now if you want to go into building, maybe selling a business or even if not selling, but into the multi-millions, then you know that uh, you're going to be facing um, big breaking points that are going to be way harder and everything you're doing now is going to prepare you anyway for to face those problems. That's that's how things work. That's how we grow. That's the evolution process. We always, we're always given challenges. That's what I believe. We are always given challenges that we can face. We are always given challenges that um, we can um, uh, that, that we can uh, um, overcome uh, if we want to, <laughs> and if we put our, <laughs> if we get the right support, and if we are open enough to get the right support and to put our head down up until things are done. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes days. But the bigger the business, the bigger the challenges. So these are my nine learnings. Let me recap them for those of you that have joined now. Uh, this is uh, something before I do. Thank you very much, Linda. Sharing your network is your currency. Roger Hamilton. Thank you very much, Linda Granson, for sharing. Uh, if you have any question, I would love to answer your question. And uh, if you answer the questions, then I will have a surprise for you as well if you ask the question uh, i will select one question the question i will answer they will win a prize that's that's how we're going to do now for on the show so number one invest in your network number two learn from other industries number three get your ego out of the way or leave it your ego out of the door connect not sell number four number five know how to have fun and be interesting number six have something to offer number seven know your numbers number eight network strategically number nine the bigger your the bigger you play the bigger the challenges so these are my nine points these are my nine learnings from uh, spending time with uh, millionaires multimillionaires in a private island uh, in croatia um, in this private mastermind invitation only which uh, was incredibly eye-opening and uh, we invested money to be there uh, we invested time to be there and definitely it paid off. I can say that it was one of the best investments that I've made. If you are already like uh, making multiple six figures or ideally seven figure plus, then check out this community. It's called Baby Bath Water. Uh, I absolutely love the time that I spend there. So it's called Baby Bath Water. Uh, then uh, I, I highly recommend it. Highly, 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 highly recommended. Um, now, the big thing is that you don't have to be an egomaniac to be there. <laughs> like, if you're an egomaniac, then they're gonna, <laughs> they, you will not fit really well. But uh, if you're not, you're willing to help and support, and you're not the kind of person uh, who, who just thinks they are the best in the world in everything, then <laughs> you will, you, you will, um, you will be very welcome there. So we have a question now from Michelle before we wrap up. What's the best way to follow up on a new network after you left it so long? Ooh. So uh, the num the best way to follow up is not to leave it so long. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> so um, schedule time whenever you're going to a new network or you're meeting new networks for following up. So that's, for example, something I'm doing. Um, I'm leaving a maximum a week, ideally a few days and then keep following up and building a relationship with them. Now, if you don't have time to create those, uh, to, to have calls with everyone because it's a huge community, something you can do, you can select, you can ask the organizer, who are the people I should follow up with? 
they will know who is in the room, they will know who is there, particularly if it's a smaller community or a small environment. So as the organizer, who are the people I should follow up with? Maybe are people that you haven't met. That's something I found really useful. Uh, the other thing is having a podcast, or if you don't have a podcast, writing articles about them, having a way to interview them. That's, uh, for me, the best way because uh, I'm not only connecting with incredible people, I'm creating content at the same time for, for our followers and our audience. And as well, I keep the relationship alive and I have actually more time to, to talk to them, to get to know them and to get to know each other. Because that's the beauty about a podcast. Um, you are sharing with them, you're asking them personal questions. And uh, so it becomes a quite a, an intimate conversation because that's what the audience also likes to hear. Uh, the more, the deeper you go in the conversation, the more engaging and the more effective then the episode will become. So these are my uh, recommendations. So first of all, don't leave it too long. Secondly, if you leave it too long, ask people to, to reconnect and interview them uh, or ask the event organizer, who should I follow up with? So these are my top three tips. So, Michelle, thank you, thank you very much for this, for this interview. And, uh, well, because you are already a Lifetime member and you have all our courses. <laughs> so, I was like, okay, what can I give Michelle now? She's already a Lifetime member and a team member. <laughs> so, what can I give you? I will make an introduction for a speaking engagement for you, Michelle. So, that's, that's what I will do. Um, that's what will happen with everyone. <laughs> Unless you guys are lifetime members or team members already, uh, but uh, um, everyone else will get online programs and access to our community. So just to be clear <laughs> with everyone, all right. Thank you very much uh, for watching. If you're watching live, really appreciate it. Give me a whoop whoop here in the comments if you enjoyed this show. And as well, if you are watching or listening to the replay on our podcast or YouTube, then subscribe to the channel and let us know what you enjoyed the most about this episode. Um, so then we know what kind of content to create. And if you have any other question, then feel free to reach out on our social media platform. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. I'm Looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.